Yeah, and I would love to talk more about how everything would or will change uh, once we do uh, figure out who else is out in the universe. But I think right now that leads us directly into something that's very topical right now. Uh, you know, we're t getting very close to getting uh, very close observation on 3i Atlas. And I just would love for people that maybe haven't been following it as closely, why is that important right now? And uh, also, this is only the third interstellar object that has come into our solar system. Why has there only been three or, or three that we've been able to observe? Right. We we just discovered three, but there are many more. <laughs> and mm. uh, uh, we started the, developing the instruments uh, to, that are capable of, of noticing them only over the past decade. These are survey telescopes. The reason they were developed is Congress uh, tasked NASA to find 90% of all the objects bigger than a football field that come close to Earth. These are called near-Earth uh, objects. And you know, the, we know about this, the story about the dinosaurs. Um, mm -hmm. They were killed by um, uh, a giant rock uh, asteroid the size of uh, Manhattan Island. Uh, they didn't look up. That was their mistake. Mm -hmm. We are more intelligent than they are. We are looking up. So the Congress tasked NASA to find 90% of all these objects bigger than a football field. Now, the, the one that killed the dinosaurs was the size of Manhattan Island. So. You know, we we know all of those big ones, but we are we're still interested in in, in uh, objects of order a hundred meters because they can cause a lot of damage, an aerial damage more than uh, the size of uh, New York City. They they can really be much more powerful than uh, the biggest nuclear bomb that we ever you know develop. So um, if they impact the Earth, so we we are worried about them, and as a result, um, these uh, survey telescopes, like for example, PanStars in uh, Hawaii, or most recently, the Rubin Observatory in Chile. They were funded by the National Science Foundation, by uh, the Department of Energy, uh, and uh, by NASA in order to search for such near-Earth objects. And uh, back in 2017, they saw one, but they noticed that it's moving really fast, uh, so fast that it can be bound by gravity to the sun. So that was the first interstellar object noticed. It was given the name Oumuamua, uh, which means a scout in the Hawaiian language, roughly the size of a football field. Uh, but it was really strange because as it was tumbling every eight hours, the amount of sunlight reflected from it changed by a factor of 10. So that meant it has a very extreme shape, most likely flat, like a pancake. And moreover, it was pushed away from the sun by some mysterious force. And it didn't shed any mass. There was no gas or dust around it. And so it wasn't a comet. Uh, and so uh, uh, the question was, what is pushing it? And I thought maybe it's the sunlight pushing it, uh, just the reflection of sunlight. If it's thin enough, it will have a, a large area for its mass. So it can be pushed by reflecting sunlight. And actually, two years later, the same telescope discovered another object, which was definitely pushed by reflecting sunlight, ended up being a rocket booster from 1966 uh, not launched by NASA. And uh, we know that it's technological because we produced it. Mm -hmm. The question is who produced Oumuamua? And we will never know that because uh, there was very limited data collected. The astronomers at first called it a comet. And then when it was clear that it's not a comet, at least we don't see evidence for gas or dust around it, which is the defining property of a comet, you know, it's just like the stripes on a zebra. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, then um, they called it an asteroid, but then it was pushed away from the sun. And so they said, well, maybe it's a dark comet. That's what some of the experts are now saying, which is an oxymoron because it's basically an object which you know is being pushed away from the sun, but has no evaporation. It's, it doesn't have a cometary tail. So in my mind, it's just like looking at a, a different animal, you know, like looking at an elephant and you are familiar with finding zebras and then you see that the elephant has no stripes. So you call it, instead of calling it a new animal, you say it's a zebra without stripes. So it's a dark comet, which, you know, takes away any confidence you have in the integrity of the scientific process because, you know, these experts are calling it 
in, in the name of something familiar, even though they have no evidence for this something familiar. There is no cometary evaporation. Why do you call it a comet in the case of Oumuamua? Anyway, the second object discovered, 2019, that was definitely a comet. Uh, it looked just like the comets we have in the solar system, and it was given the name Borisov. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the third one was the one discovered on July 1st this year, 2025, given the name 3i, which means the third interstellar, Atlas. Atlas was the name of the telescope in Chile that discovered it. And as it was discovered the same night, I realized that it was very bright. And if you assume that the brightness stems from just the reflection of sunlight, you would conclude that it has a size, a diameter of about 20 kilometers, you know, um, comparable to, to Manhattan Island. Uh, it's huge and it's much bigger than Oumuamua, which was about 100 meters. You know, just think about the size of a football field compared to the size of Manhattan. So it doesn't make much sense to have, you know, a small object and then immediately something that is bigger by a factor of 100. You know, like, how is that possible? You know, and the, the analogy that I make is, you know, the mass is a million times if the size is a, is a hundred times bigger. Mm -hmm. The analogy I make is with a cat. You know, suppose you see an animal in your backyard and, um, you know, the experts tell you, well, it must be a street cat. Okay. And then uh, you realize this animal is a million times more massive than a previous animal that... Uh, it was the uh, you know a, a, a cat or at least a thousand times more massive than than that so and then they say yeah but cats are are common so they it's probably a cat and then uh, what you see is that it has a tail that goes out of its forehead it's not coming from its rear end and that was the case with three eye atlas there was a, a plume of scattered light. Uh, that looked more like a cigar extending 10 times longer than it was wide towards the sun. So we saw glow ahead of the object towards the sun instead of what happens typically with comets, uh, that they lose uh, dust or gas that, that leaves their surface. Uh, and then the dust scatters sunlight. But as a result of that, it gets pushed behind the object. And that's how you get a cometary tail. When when the dust is pushed away from the sun. But in the case of 3i Atlas, we saw the scattered light towards the sun. So it's like having a, an animal with a tail coming out of its forehead. And uh, I said, well, uh, so, so the experts looked at the image that came from the Hubble Space Telescope and they said, well, it's a cat because it has a tail, but, but it's not a tail, it's an anti-tail. Hmm. And that, that they omitted. So when NASA says, well, it's a comet, they do not uh, pay attention to the fact that it has unusual properties, anomalous properties. And then, so not only it's big, you know, and, and, and therefore, you know, we should have seen a million objects like Oumuamua before seeing one that is as big as this one, uh, just because there is limited mass to, to provide you with, with uh, such a big one. There is also not enough rocky material in interstellar space to deliver such an object over the past decade. You would expect it once per 10,000 years or longer. And then uh, it, it goes on a path that is perfectly aligned with the planets around the sun to within five degrees. And the chance of that happening at random is one in 500. So why would such an object have a fine-tuned trajectory? And, you know, one possibility is because it, the, the path was designed by some intelligence. There is a purpose for the visit. And, you know, a size of order tens of kilometers is roughly the size of uh, Rama in the story Rendezvous with, with Rama that uh, Arthur C. Clarke wrote, the, the mm -hmm. famous novel. So that is the fundamental question. Is it, is it really a natural object like a comet? And if so, why does it have this unusual tail ahead of it, at least during July and August? That was the case uh, in the best image we got of it. Also, people measured the composition of the gas around it, and uh, we found that it's mostly carbon dioxide. 87% is carbon dioxide, in difference from what you expect from a typical comet that has water. And then, uh, in addition, 
uh, there was um, nickel without iron detected coming out of it uh, and cyanide. Now nickel without iron, uh, the only place we find it is in industrial production of nickel alloys. Uh, you, in nature, in all the other comments that were looked at in the past, you find nickel and iron with comparable amounts. And uh, in this one, just nickel, no, no iron. So I'm saying, look, this is a bit uh, strange and...